I'm one of these people who views cooking as a life skill. I think because we all eat food, we should all know how to cook a variety of meals. We don't all have to be chef level cooks. I'm not. I would love to be, but I'm not. Largely because I don't have interests. I don't really enjoy cooking and so on and so forth. I, why don't I enjoy cooking? For the larger part of my life, I really didn't even like food at all. But I learned how to cook because it is a life skill which I do not feel should be outsourced to any other person. Now, be you male or female, if you have put yourself in a position where you cannot eat except somebody else enters the kitchen, you are shortchanging yourself. One, even if you hire a chef, there will be days when your chef, for one reason or another, might not be able to turn up. If you have a maid, and maids can be particularly nasty. I used to have one who would wait when she knows that I really have work. Then she would suddenly get sick and not turn up. You know what I used to do? I just roll up my sleeves because I'm that kind of person who, even when I have a maid, we're working hand in hand, side by side, especially in the kitchen. And I'm the kind of person who insists that every other person in the house should get up and pitch in with one thing or another. Logic being that the day this person doesn't show up, my house doesn't go, go down in flames because one person decided to hold us hostage. Okay? So, if your maid finds out that the reason you rely so much on her to cook is because you don't know how to, you are going to be in trouble. Yes, because many of them are extremely spiteful. And even if that were not the case, you eat. Learn how to cook. You need to eat food to survive, to be alive at all. So don't completely depend on anybody for that to happen for you. Cooking helps you to eat in. And when you eat in, you save money. To the extent that you can help it, don't outsource things that you can do yourself. So let's say, for instance, like when we were living, there was a certain part of town we were living in, and my neighbor who was living across the road from me, she also used to be a colleague at uh, one of the places I'd worked. I was so impressed. Between herself, her husband, and her three sons, not even daughters, so they used to keep their home. They didn't have a maid. From laundry to cleaning or to cooking, whoever had the misfortune of getting home first, had the responsibility of preparing a meal for the entire household. So her three sons all knew how to cook. Her husband also knew how to cook. She also knew how to cook. And they were living a relatively happy life. You know, nobody was waiting for the other person to pick up or to do this first and so on and so forth. Everybody had a responsibility, one, of picking up after themselves and then of pitching in their own bits to keep the entire household clean to cook food, wash the dishes, do the laundry, and everything. So they didn't need a maid. You know. So they didn't need a maid, they didn't need a wash person, the man would drive himself, she would drive herself, and believe me, they were not poor. They were not poor. It's just the culture of, you know, every home has its own culture. That was their own culture in that household. Last but not least, now you may have noticed that I have an array of items on, the, on my desk here today and I'm just using them to give you examples. You see, I cannot remember, to be quite frank, I cannot remember the last time I had a professional pedicure. This is not to say it is useless. It isn't useless. But... You see this thing? It's known as a pumice stone. There is no day taking my bath as a child that this wasn't used to scrub my feet. And it became a part of my life. 
there is literally no time I step into the shower, morning or evening, that I don't wrap up my routine by scrubbing my feet, the soles of my feet, with this thing. And it takes the dead skin cells off, it takes the dirt off. I also regularly trim my nails with nail clippers, both hands and feet. You know, so my going to the salon to get somebody to do it for me professionally happens just once or twice a year. Just once or twice a year. Because I do this every single day. Then apart from that, I don't live the kind of lifestyle where I'm constantly walking barefoot or, you know, like making my feet, making contact with the bare soil all the time. I've never experienced cracked feet because when I'm done with my shower and I'm putting on lotion, I make sure that I use petroleum jelly or nowadays I'm, I'm, I rely more heavily on shea butter. I use that on my feet, on my knees, my ankles, those parts of the body that have very hard skin. So whenever you see my feet, they're in good form. So the going for the pedicure is like the icing on the cake kind of thing. Now there are people who will go for pedicures, they will have this and still go for pedicure like maybe monthly. That's fine too, there's nothing wrong with it. But for my part, I find that this works for me relatively well. So I don't want to just go and give somebody a random 3,500 or 5,000 just to soak my feet and do almost exactly the same thing I do in my house every day. I just do that once in a while. It saves me money. Then I don't, I rarely wear artificial nails. And that is because I have a very hands-on approach to housekeeping. I wash my undies myself, I wash plates, I handle meat, I handle tomatoes, things like this. It's a very impractical way. You, you'll find it very difficult if you're wearing these long nails, artificial nails. So even when I do wear nails, I keep them very short. And that would be like, for me, be like, if I, have, if I have an occasion to attend and I really want to look good and I don't want the nail polish to chip before that day, okay, I'll go and get the manicure done, put the fake nails on, keep it on for about three weeks to a month, and then they begin to fall off because of how much work I do with my hands and how much contact I have with water. You know, so for me, it's not a very practical thing to do. So again, I rely on my nail clippers. I rely on my nail polish remover. You know, you do that, clip your nails, do that. Then you use your... Everybody calls this nail hardener, but I found that it is not always a nail hardener. Sometimes it's a top coat. You use that, either use that and then top it off with something colorful. If I think I won't be making too much contact with water, okay? Sometimes I put it on just for the fun of it, to have it on for a day or two, because the more you use water to wash blades, your undies and things and so on and so forth, the more it chips and then it leaves an ugly look behind. So sometimes I forgo using the painted look and just go with the transparent look. Then, apart from that, not just my nails, you see perfumes, designer perfumes are good. They're a statement piece. They make you feel luxurious. They make you feel, you know, like you have a right. There's nothing wrong with them. I have. But you see, for everyday use, just to smell nice, just to go visit a neighbor, go down the street, and so on and so forth, eh, I have perfume oils. I bought this one. Was it 3,000 or so? And it's lasted me over two or three months. You just put it on your pulse points, and it still smells good. There's that one. Then these body sprays, most of them don't cost more than 1,500 naira. You can equally, depending on how you're using it, yeah, it will take you for at least another two or three months and it just costs one five. 
and it lasts almost as long as the designer perfume that will cost you 80,000 naira, 120,000 and so on and so forth. So that that one you keep it and use it sparingly when you're going for you know occasions, celebrations and so on and so forth and you want to make a statement. You use those ones then and at that rate it can take you for almost a year plus. Especially when you have more than one. Same thing, you have a variety of these uh, cheap um, body sprays. You know, you smell good on the cheap. Because I'm the kind of person who, when I take my evening bath, I still like to use these things before going to bed. So it makes more sense, more practical sense for me to use body sprays than designer perfume every second of every moment. Which I just don't uh, like that idea. Then, there's this product I bought. Ah, it's a lotion that smells so good. I'm not going to tell you the name because like I said, nobody's paying me for any endorsement, but it smells so good. Right now, I use it just for my hands because as you can see, the container is small. It's not something that you're going to use for your entire body for more than two or three days before you exhaust the product. But not only does it feel good to the hands, the scent lasts practically all day. And I'm saying this as somebody who does a lot with water. After putting it on, the scent is as if you're, you've used, you know, standard designer fragrance. And then I have cause to do something with water and I sniff my hands and I can still perceive the scent. That's how good this particular product is. And it set me back just 3,500 naira. I use it just for my hands, so as you can see, it's not, uh, I haven't depleted it too much. I've had it for about a month now. Yeah. I bought it because I noticed my hands are getting, they're getting old from spending, you know. <laughs> when you're constantly using soap, water, hot water, and so on and so forth, within a short while, you find that your hands begin to look aged. You know, they don't look, uh, the skin on your hands don't look soft and supple anymore and I'm not the kind of person who wants to use rubber gloves so I decided okay what I'll do is I'll start using hand creams more heavily so that I don't my hands don't look older than I actually am so those are just a few tips which I've shared with you I'm hoping that you know you got something out of this that made sense to you another thing avoid fashion fads you know, that's, that's where this last one comes in. Fashion fads. Oh, this one is in vogue. I must use it. That one is the vogue. I must use it. If you have the money to do so, by all means, there's nothing wrong. I'm not saying don't pamper yourself. But if you're one of these people who wants to be prudent with money because you have other responsibilities, maybe you're paying somebody's school fees somewhere, you have aged uh, family somewhere that are looking up to you, you have a brother somewhere who depends on you, for his upkeep and so on and so forth. There are certain luxuries you can't really afford at that point because it's almost cruel. So it's better to go for classic, you know, items that can stand the test of time. For instance, you'll never go wrong with a pair of black trousers. You'll never go wrong with a couple of t-shirts. You'll never go wrong with a few button-down shirts and so on and so forth. So you go for classy pieces that don't go out of fashion easily. And then you find yourself you're constantly running to keep up with this fashion trend and the other fashion trend. It doesn't work for the pocket, except you're exceptionally rich. Okay? So these are my tips, if they've been useful to you. Join me again in another few days, and I'll share more tips on how you can manage your resources.